Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be working on this uh, Chinese maple or kaeda. It is a customer's tree and uh, he's given it to me to do some maintenance. It's now late spring, actually probably early summer more, more accurately. And uh, as you can see a lot of the shoots which is very typical of the species have, uh, has outgrown the profile of the tree. So I'm going to be looking at what I need to prune. Uh, there's a lot of yellowing leaves inside the canopy as well, which is also very typical. Um, there's a lack of sunlight that is able to get into the canopy due to the amount of leaves that are on the tree at the moment. And then there's also a very large hollow or uro on this tree. This is how the customer had bought it. And uh, he and I have discussed it at length whether to, to, um, to keep it and keep it as a feature of the tree or whether to fill it and uh, get it to callus over. And uh, through that consultation process we've decided that we're rather going to fill it. Uh, it doesn't really contribute to the story or to the to the tree in any way um, and so we're rather going to fill it up and then possibly do some grafting over that area as well uh, to get some branches lower down in the tree. If I could just for a moment share some of the history of this tree. Uh, this customer has been a client of mine for a number of years and when I first started working on his collection he had this tree that he'd bought from a quite a, quite a well-known uh, South African bonsai artist and um, I found it to be extremely weak. It was growing in a very sandy compost, uh, typical potting soil mix that seems to be quite prevalent here still, unfortunately. And um, that mix is very difficult to actually water because, or I find it's very difficult to water properly because it's either too water retentive and then you have a slowing down of the growth. You potentially have rotting of roots. Uh, a bunch of negative uh, effects, um, that is if it's kept too wet. And if you allow it to dry out uh, quite a bit, the problem then becomes wetting the soil once again because of the, the very fine sand that is also in there. And the, also the organic material, once that's very dry, it, it tends to be quite difficult to, to wet it once again. And so the first thing that we actually did was to repot the tree. So we removed all that old growing medium and we potted it up into a Akadama uh, pumice uh, mix. And that was, I believe, in a two to one ratio. So two parts Akadama, one part pumice. And of course, the Akadama being the more water retentive component in that mix helped us to, to get um, in Kaeda or Ch Chinese maples, they do like a bit more of a, a moist substrate to grow in. But it's given us a very porous growing medium um, and, and it's got a very good, uh, it, it has the ability to retain uh, nutrients very well, that mix. And uh, so in a very short space of time, I think it's possibly two years maybe since, since it was repotted, it has really bounced back very well. And so the tree is now in a condition that we can actually work on it. Before, any work that you're doing on a tree that is weak, uh, you run the risk of branches dying back um, and the response to the techniques. For instance, if you were pruning and expecting some back budding, if the tree is not healthy enough, you're going to get very few buds, uh, if any, forming. And if it's really that weak, um, the tree may actually drop that branch. So we first needed to repotting was I identified the soil as being a major contributing factor to the weakness of the tree. And so by repotting it, uh, we revitalized the tree. And uh, as I say, now we can consider working on it. So I'm not going to be wiring the tree at this point because it's very difficult to wire deciduous trees when they're full of leaves. And although trident maples can be fully defoliated in my experience, this does uh, weaken them. So you have to start with a very tree, strong tree to begin with. And, uh, but in this case, I'm rather going to do a partial defoliation. And that would just be to allow more light into the tree. But I'm not going to be doing a full defoliation.
As I mentioned, I'm not going to be doing wiring today. What I would rather do is do that wiring in autumn when the leaves start to change color. You can, that is a confirmation that the sap is receding into the root zone and you can then um, remove the leaves so we can go back and prune the leaves off uh, because there will be some sap flow and the material, the wood, the growth that has been put on that past this past season would not have fully lignified or hardened off and uh, by that point so it will be soft enough to still wire. The problem with the trident maples once the branches become probably two to three years old uh, they become very brittle and it's it's I would say pretty much impossible to bend them or almost impossible to bend them. Uh, maybe minor bends but anything fairly substantial angle changes you are running the risk of snapping those branches and so it needs to be wired or trident maples in my experience need to be wired when the branches are still fairly young otherwise uh, you can only really fix those problems by pruning uh, selective pruning and growing those sections once again. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm about to work on a tree is just to clean my tools make sure well you can, it's actually a better idea to to clean your tools after you've worked with them on any given day uh, but I didn't do that last time so I'm going to just clean the tools before I start working and uh, that is I'm just using a cream mate block and that is just to remove the build up of any resin from the trees or tree that I worked on previously uh, so if you do this quite frequently or if you do this every time you work with your tools uh, then there won't be any chance for the buildup or residue to become significant. Uh, so <clears throat> just clean them off and then if they need any oiling uh, you can use jojoba oil, some other natural oil to, uh, to, to lubricate the pin and then just a few strokes with a diamond sharpener uh, just to hone the edge get it nice and sharp and uh, if you're using the ultra fine or an ultra fine file or other if you're using whetstones as well then you don't really have to do very much just a few strokes should be more than adequate just to give the tool an edge a good nice sharp edge once again so you're not sharpening it as such uh, going through the several different grades or grits uh, we're just honing the edge just to give it a nice sharp uh, cutting edge to to work with then the first thing that I want to do is to prune the tree back into shape again now when you're pruning you obviously have a profile in mind uh, so that is the shape the outline if you were to draw uh, your tree as a solid mass uh, black on white paper it's that outline that you're wanting to prune back to so when you're pruning these trees it's advisable to keep this first bud because that's the spring growth and this is this is making the tree more uh, vigorous or it will keep the tree in a in a energy positive state if you like um, that's a term that's being used a lot lately and but by pruning this back into old wood you're going to be weakening the tree because you're asking it to to bud back further whereas this section is already quite vigorous so there's a lot of hormones in this area auxins if you like and this is going to by keeping this first but this first internode um, you're not going to be weakening the tree unnecessarily so this is so you can just prune out this growth yeah and then what we're also going to do is I'm going to prune out every alternate leaf so wherever I have two leaves I'm gonna prune one leaf out so I just like to show that to you again so yeah we have a number of buds and or a number we have a number of shoots 
And these internodes are actually very nice for a Trident Maple, it's really not bad at all. The extension for a refined tree like this is, is quite short, so that's great. So now we're going to prune back to this point. Now we potentially could have buds forming on either side and I'm going to remove the one leaf. Uh, this is so that we still have a fully functioning leaf and so the tree can, I'm not setting the tree back too much by doing a full uh, defoliation but I am going to allow more light into the tree and that through the process of this pruning as well as allowing more light in may result in some back budding or some budding forming further back on the interior of the tree which we can use to uh, increase the ramification. So I'm going to start from the top of the tree and I'm going to work to the bottom and I'm going to be as I mentioned pruning the growth out and uh, cutting one of two leaves. So some, some areas are not strong enough, the shoots are not strong enough, they haven't extended uh, enough and so I will just leave those shoots alone so that they can gain in strength. Uh, very weak branches, I won't be defoliating them at all. I uh, would rather keep the leaves on those branches and that will help them to gain strength. The side that you leave the leaf on um, is likely to put out a stronger bud. So what you can do is you can also uh, do almost uh, clip and grow to an extent. Uh, the, the, if you want the branch to develop in a particular angle then keep that leaf and remove the other one. I finished the pruning and the partial defoliation on this tree. Uh, it's important always to understand the stage of development that your tree is at and to apply the correct techniques. So this defoliation or partial defoliation was not to attain smaller leaves at all. That was not the thinking. The goal here is to get more sunlight into the tree. This tree is fairly sparsely ramified. It was grown in a, a bit of a dated or an outdated manner in that you have one central branch and then you have branches forking off to the side. Uh, and a lot of the so it, the problem now is that you have and also because of the growing habit of Chinese maples in that they well at least the, the the genetics of this particular one is that the new growth emerges at 90 degree angles to the primary branch to the leader um, what's happened is that you have what looks a bit like a herringbone so you have a the, the, the primary structure of this tree very much has a, a core branch or a structural branch and then it has secondary branches all going out at essentially 90 degree angles. So um, that's a bit of a, it's a bit of a problem um, but the one drastic way of sorting out that issue if you wanted to change it is to cut off the branches and start with the trunk and uh, basically start again. Uh, the method or the approach that I'm going to, to use is that over a period of time I'm going to rebuild the tree. Uh, when I say rebuild the tree what I mean is that use the growth the tree gives to me in response to fertilizing, correct watering, just getting it in a health, in, into a healthy condition that I do get growth occurring and emanating or originating from the interior of the tree and then to shape those branches better uh, so that the angles are not 90 degree for instance to the to the structural branch but rather a much more gentle curve 30 degrees something like that uh, it's a much a much more natural appearance and then as those branches become stronger uh, they can take over from the existing structural branches so those would then be pruned out
Uh, one could also use approach graphs uh, for that, of course, that, that's definitely a technique, um, but it's not really, uh, it's not re necessary in this particular case. So um, the next step, the next thing, as I mentioned, uh, that I'm going to do earlier is that this cavity in the tree, it's, it's actually, um, there is a an area, yeah, which is quite dangerous. I mean, if you, you know, some people would like this, and I'm not saying there's any, there's certainly nothing wrong with having this kind of feature uh, on a tree. It's not my preference with something uh, like a Chinese maple. And, um, and my customer has agreed that we would fill this space or fill this hollow up and get the tree to callus over. So in this particular case, because it is a trident maple, I have no concerns over that happening in the space of probably three years, maybe at maximum, given the current health of this tree and that it is also already in a bonsai pot. If it was something that was in the ground, obviously it would happen a lot quicker. Um, but this space will be covered over and then possibly a branch could be approach grafted at this area to fill up this space that is currently just uh, empty. And um, part of the reason for this is that, that I want to fill it, uh, at least a part uh, of, of the reason, is that there is, the hollow goes down into this area. And the problem is that it's trapping water. And so the interior core of the tree is just going to rot out. So the first step will be to remove the rotting wood get it back to a good wood, so wood that hasn't started rotting yet, and then it will be filled with cement. In this case, I'm going to be using a rock set, which is a cement-like product. Uh, you mix it with water, it comes in a powder. You mix it with water and you can pour it in and it will set in probably about a half an hour. And um, what's also nice is that if, if you get to it before it's completely set, you can uh, carve away at it to so shape it a little bit. You can also, it's not really a putty, so it's a bit, dif it would be difficult to shape it by pressing, but you, you can do that, sort of molding it slightly. Um, but you can take a chisel and actually chisel it away. But then if you leave it overnight uh, or a couple of days, it will then be um, very hard or extremely hard. These are the two products that we have in South Africa that uh, can work. This is the alkaline rapid set anchoring and patching cement and this is the rock set fast anchoring cement. So they're essentially the same product. You can use either one and uh, you mix it with water. The first step will be to remove any rotting wood uh, just to get it back to good wood that we can that the cement can attach to and then uh, no further rotting will, will occur. After you have cleaned out and or uh, carved out the rotting wood and blown it out or cleaned it out somehow, you can then use a little bit of packaging wrap or you can use um, packaging tape uh, to create a sort of a form or a mold around which or you wrap that around the tree and this will just make pouring the rock set or the liquid cement into the cavity easier otherwise you're going to <laughs> it makes it very much it makes it very much easier to use something like this uh, to pour the cement into once you've finished preparing the tree, you can then mix up your rock set or your cement and you want to get something that resembles a thin uh, kind of a yogurt type of consistency, something that you can pour with and then uh, but mix according to the package instructions uh, but it will require a little bit of trial and error. So just add a little bit of water until to the powder until you get the right consistency and then just mix it well you don't want any lumps of the product in there 
And then when you're ready, you can pour the rock set or this liquid cement into the plastic cavity or behind the barrier that you've made with plastic. It's now been about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and uh, that's given enough time for the cement to dry, enough for it to hold its shape. So I'm going to be removing the plastic wrap. <clears throat> now there's certain areas that uh, this this cavity up here that hasn't that I was unable to fill with the pouring um, due to gravity <laughs> uh, that needs to be filled. You could probably fill it with some putty as well, but I also want to make this surface over here, uh, it's very flat at the moment, and I want to make it slightly, uh, bulge it slightly. Um, <clears throat> you, you need to, through experience, I think you, you would need to know how much to bulge, make it bulge. You don't want to do too much because the callus uh, tissue of Trident Maples is also quite thick. Uh, but this is a fairly large space and um, or a fairly large area that's very flat. So I think it will look better once it's healed if it was a little bit more um, rounded. So I've mixed up some more of the cement and uh, this time I've made a very thick um, paste of it and this is easier to, to mold, to shape. And I'm just using the spatula side of a, a bonsai rake to do this. But you can use any other flat spatula type tool. And this will also, uh, once it's healed over, it will also look a little bit more natural because at the moment, uh, being that it's very flat, depending on where the future front of this tree is, because I think that's likely to change uh, after this work, um, the, it might be better to, uh, it, it may look very uh, odd if the, the trunk, the girth of the trunk is very flat in this particular area. So rounding it like this, giving it a little bit more volume uh, should make it look a little bit more natural. The idea with this is of course that once the callus is formed and healed over the cement that you should never, you, it, it should never look like anything ever ha was there um, at any point. Uh, so it should be totally hidden, and totally invisible. So one, while this is hardening it's quite uh, easy to work with as you can see. But once it's hard, it becomes hard as a, as a rock. Uh, and um, yeah, so you need to work it while it's still in this state. Otherwise, it becomes impossible. I suppose you can grind a away at it, maybe, but um, not using typical hand tools, I think. As you can see, the cement has now hardened. And um, there's, there's some dry just sort of spillage really, which I'm going to clean off with a wire brush. I'm using a nylon brush and some water. It's not really necessary for you to use anything harder than nylon. And uh, if you did, it may also damage the bark. But this is working perfectly fine. So the next thing that we want to do is to activate the callus on the edges of the cement and I'm going to do that with a grafting knife. You can use a blade, anything that is very sharp and we just want to expose the green cambium below the bark and this is going to activate this, this the edge of this tissue and uh, 
initiate callus formation. And in fact, you can actually do this uh, once, once a season or so, um, or every few years, if you've got a scar that's taking a while to heal, and, um, and it'll start the, the callus formation process, because it tends to slow down um, after a period of time. The best time of the year to, to do this kind of work is going to be in late spring or early summer, which is when I'm doing it. The reason for that is, is particularly on Chinese maples, the, the callus tends to roll. It heals very aggressively. And by doing it later in the season, the, the, the sap flow has slowed down a bit. And so the callus formation is uh, a lot nicer, a lot smoother. If it rolls, then it tends to bubble, um, boil. It kind of makes these round shapes, doesn't look that great. And uh, often end up having to start, uh, start it again, because it's not something that you can keep. Then the final step is to seal the live tissue that you've just exposed. And I'm going to be using top gin paste and a paintbrush uh, just to apply it. It works easier that way. And you only need to paint it onto the exposed tissue. You definitely don't need to paint the cement as well. This will just seal the exposed or live tissue and prevent it from drying out. And uh, so it keeps it moist and therefore it will keep rolling over. The callus can form. If it dries out, it's no good. If that tissue dries out, then it will not callus. It'll die back until the sap flow is uh, uh, restored or it finds a new flow and, and then it won't die back any further but it will die back from from the edge so it's important that you seal over here so that there's on the edges that you've just exposed so that there is no dieback at all and also it obviously helps the tree to resist any kind of uh, bacterial or other infection so the uro or cavity has now been filled and it's been shaped and the live edges have now been activated and sealed and so now the callus can form over this sound surface that the cement has provided. The first task that needed to be completed was the pruning of the growth that it is extended or that had extended from beyond the profile of the tree. Uh, this is typically work that you would need to do in late spring, early summer. You can do it once the leaves have become sort of leathery uh, into the, to the touch. This means that they have hardened off and it's then a good idea to, to go back and do that work. So I looked for the branches or branchlets that had extended uh, a considerable distance from the profile of the tree and those ones were pruned back to two buds, to two dormant buds. Uh, the idea being that um, at the base of those or those buds will now be activated through the pruning of the, the branch. I then also did a partial defoliation of that branch and in fact the entire tree, meaning that every alternate leaf I removed. The purpose of that were, had nothing to do with uh, reducing the leaf size. It was everything to do with promoting light penetrating into the canopy. Uh, that will then also hopefully help to produce inner buds on the canopy, so back in the structure of the tree, that combined with the redistribution of the auxins um, that take place, that will take place now that I've pruned the branches shorter, um, auxins will now be redistributed 
and then the additional light penetrating the canopy, hopefully those two factors combined will produce buds on the interior of the tree. Those buds will then be useful, very useful, to rebuilding over a period of time the structure of this tree entirely and also ensuring the future of the tree because of course every year if you keep on pruning once or twice a year branches are going to become thicker and they will become coarse so you're you're, you're going to lose that refined appearance uh, of the branchlets as they get out onto the the profile of the tree so you do need to deciduous trees part of the work uh, when they get to being refined or mature they do you do need to replace branches with new younger more delicate branchlets uh, then there were some uh, some branches as well that were not strong enough to be pruned and those ones were left alone and uh, they also did not have any of the leaves cut you want as much of the sort of uh, 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 the, the, the solar panels of the leaves uh, to to remain uh, so that they can photosynthesize and that those branches can become stronger and uh, so when the, then we'll see again in in autumn uh, what the, the development is like after this work that was completed today and then that will dictate to me what actions and how severe or how aggressive I can be with any future or any pruning at that at that time. Uh, the next thing that I did was to fill a canopy a, a cavity in the tree in Uro uh, and it was an area that probably uh, happened or occurred as a result of some field growing uh, technique or possibly just uh, when the tree was collected. I'm not sure if it was a collected tree. Um, trident maples very often self-seed. They're very frequently used as street planting trees. You find them on many, uh, well you find them all over the place in people's gardens and it's quite possible that this tree was uh, an urban Yamadori as it's sometimes called. So and through, through consultation with the customer, we determined that we'd prefer to fill that, um, that cavity uh, and then rather fill that space or grow branches in that, that area. And uh, so the first step was to remove the old rotting wood. And I then used Roxet, uh, which is a fast anchoring cement, uh, to, to fill that space. Uh, and then and then also uh, sealing, uh, scoring the edge of the live tissue and activating the callus formation, uh, sealing that so that it remained or keeps it moist. So you just need to bear in mind that you will never get callus forming over rotting wood. It's important that you provide, if you do have areas with large scars that need to be healed over, it's important that you need that you provide a sound uh, surface. When I say sound, it means that uh, it's filled with something. So in other words, it doesn't have to roll over and fall over and then fill up this, this void in some magical manner. You need to raise the surface that the callus needs to form over so that it, it, it can roll easily over and form and, and, and make that wound invisible. So the idea would then be in two or three years or whenever this is now healed over, depending on the vigor of the tree, uh, it will take maybe three years or so, perhaps longer, but um, in the life of this tree that's not a long time to wait. And uh, once that's uh, occurred, I can then go back and use approach grafting to, to put a few branches over that area and fill up the negative space that is currently there. The aftercare of this tree, uh, well, it will go back to the customer's house and he will continue to fertilize it aggressively. And then in autumn, I'll most likely get the tree back again. And uh, at that point in time, I will then, when the leaves start to turn their typical autumn color, it's a good sign that you can then cut those leaves off. And uh, so, you know, effectively defoliate the tree, but it, will not, it doesn't weaken the tree at all at that point in time because the sap is already receding. Uh, so then, uh, then the tree will be defoliated and it'll be much easier to wire it at that point. Uh, there is still some sap flow, uh, so some healing can take place. And of course the wood uh, is being laid on by the tree at that point in time too. 
So um, that would then, that wire would remain on during uh, winter and then of course through spring and then at uh, the same time uh, of season uh, as we are doing the work now, I would then remove that wire which probably would be starting to bite in at that point in time just depending on how aggressively the tree is growing and uh, then I can remove that, that wire. So I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, short segment. I think possibly the, uh, the main uh, takeaway will be the filling of the scar and possibly some of the information with regards to pruning and partial defoliation. But I hope uh, whatever you can glean from it that it is helpful to you and please remember that if you haven't subscribed and liked my channel yet please do and I would really appreciate it if you would share the video links as well with your friends or your bonsai club or somebody that you think would benefit from it. I'd really appreciate that. But thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day further. Bye-bye. Till next time.